Ryan, look at these strawberries and they're fresh. Judy, look what I have and it's fresh too. <laughs> and for everyone else, we have a fresh episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. And Ryan, you know what we're missing? The barbecue. You know, we're out here at French Prairie Gardens and it's the start of their berries, brews, and barbecues. Later in the show, Jude will be talking to Katie about the festival. And also, coming up in the show today, we'll show you two beautiful gardens that you too can visit. We'll also be traveling down to Corvallis and Oregon State University and get some tips on how to attract pollinators to your garden. But coming up first, color, color, color. I am at one of my favorite places for color. I'm at Margie's Farm and Garden with Margie, and it's like, of Hi. course, it is always color here, and it's still June, and you still have beautiful flowers. Oh, we still have lots of beautiful flowers, lots of color, lots of things for your yard or garden. Definitely. Yeah. And so you have a collection here, and it looks like there's some themes going on. I have a couple different things that I wanted to talk about today. Um, the first one is hummingbird-loving plants. Um, we have quite the selection of um, hummingbird loving plants um, for all the hummingbirds that live here in our greenhouse. We have, we have quite, the, quite the variety of hummingbirds here. One of my favorite one is of course the kufias. This one's called hummingbird lunch. I mean a perfect name for, for that. Beautiful color. Um, along with that we have a couple other kufias. This is the vermilionaire from Proven Winners. Beautiful. I mean look at the flowers. That tubular flower. You can tell why hummingbirds love it. Um, this one, drama. <laughs> Diana is a little bit different of a kufia. It doesn't quite yeah, have the tubular, but we still see hummingbirds all over it. And this is such a great addition to your flower beds or a container because it has just kind of a different look, real fine looking. And are those for sun or shade? Or These are all for sun. Nice, yeah, nice. full sun. They can do some part shade, but they're going to bloom better in the full sun. And then I see so many different salvias, and some are um, perennial and some are annuals, but great collection. We have quite the variety of salvias right now, and they're just blooming fabulous. One of the new ones that we have this year is the white flame salvia, oh, look and at it's that. just getting ready to start blooming. This is new for us this year. Hummingbirds love it, and um, I think it's going to make a really great cut flower too, because nice. kind of like the blue Victoria salvia, um, it stays really well in a cut bouquet. And for me, that wouldn't even have to open up. I love that white. It's um, almost kind of like a lavender. It is. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then favorite hot lip salvia, which is hummingbird magnet. Oh, this is this is probably our number one um, hummingbird plant also is the hot lips. And then new this year to us also is the amethyst um, lips, which is beautiful. Both hummingbirds love those. And those are both a good perennial for our area. Um, come back fuller and better every year. Um, we also do um, a lot of the rock and fuchsias from Proven Winners. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, it's beautiful when they start fully opening. Pretty. Um, so we have the fuchsia, we have the purple, um, beautiful and hummingbird loving also. That is cool. And then for lower in the container, because you want something low to maybe spill, you have some plants here too. Yeah, we have quite a selection of million bells. We probably have about 30 different colors right now. Um, starting to really bloom and come out. These are great. You can put them right in your flower beds. You can put them in hanging baskets or in containers and they bloom fabulous all summer. Um, no care. So that's going with our next theme is kind of easy care plants also. Oh, we love that. Um, I also have some fuchsias along with our hummingbird loving plants. Um, these are the little upright shadow dancers. Cute. So they fill out and bloom great all summer. These are going to want more shade. That's nice. So there's really something for everyone that has different kind of sun or shade in their gardens. We can find something for anybody here. You come <laughs> with your area and we'll find something that will really thrive. Great. Um, another one of our favorites are the abutilons. Beautiful. Um, we have, a, I think, four different colors right now of the abutilons. It's a flowering maple. Um, blooms fabulous all summer. Um, keeps its leaves and I mean it has a you can see why it's a flowering maple because right. it has the maple leaf but doesn't get as big as a maple tree so it just makes a nice <laughs> shrub exactly and, and um, that is really a nice addition those bells are cool and begonias an old favorite oh you can never go wrong with begonias they're such an easy care we have a, a lot of different varieties of um, begonias these right here is one of our favorites is dragon wings mm. they do great in the flower beds or in containers or in baskets 
um, and bloom great all summer with very little care. Nice. And some impatience, which look at these flowers, they're so big. These are our magnum impatience. These are one of our favorite impatience. Um, we have a variety of different impatience. These particular ones are for the shade or morning sun, afternoon shade. They have the, you can see why they're called magnum because the blooms are so big. A uh, variety of color, another easy care plant. Nice. Um, very little things you have to do with them. And these are so cool. What are these little kind of grassy things? Oh, the tut grasses. These are some of our favorite grasses. We have them in all different sizes. So the one right here is the King Tut, and uh, it does great. Um, it can be really flexible for sun or shade. Um, this particular variety gets about six feet tall, oh, wow. six to seven feet tall if you really keep it watered. And it can do good because it can be a water plant too. You can put it right next to your pond and it'll even get bigger. Nice. And then I have the Prince Tut, which is medium height. So now if you don't want something six feet tall in your yard, <laughs> you then smaller. you can go with the Prince Tut, which is going to be about four feet tall maybe. Nice. But um, we were discussing last night, so many people lost so many trees and shrubs in their yards. You don't know what to do? We'll put a tut grass. It gets about six to seven oh, feet tall for this in. year and you can uh, figure out what to do next. And really, you have a sale going on this weekend. We do, we're so excited. We have our vintage flea market. So I have about 45 vendors here today, and um, it's handcrafted, vintage, repurposed, antiques, just something definitely for everyone. And come in and get plants too. And come in and get plants. <laughs> today only, we're doing 20% off all of our plants. Excellent. So that's hanging baskets, patio containers, individual ones, and we're here to help you figure out what you need. Oh, so nice. Really a beautiful time to come out because of the vintage flea and to get plants. So get really plants. a nice day to come out. So please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website and come out and see Margie and her friends. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. I'm at a very interesting garden today, and it's part of the Crack Pots Tour, and I'm with Anna. And Anna, your company is um, Optic Verve, uh -huh. and you're a designer. And we've come to see some of your designs, but we're actually in your garden. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so interesting to come and see what you play with and what you experiment with. So just tell us a little bit about this space. Well, it was a lawn in a potato patch when we moved in. And there were a row of fetinias along the back that were progressively laying down. So it I basically started from scratch. And this was my learning lab, and it still is. And some you can also call it one of each itis because that's pretty much what I do. I try things out and I see what things do and if it doesn't work I'll move it and you know there, it's always uh, I don't put something in somebody else's garden unless I know what it does so here is what I learn and it's a little jumbled but I like it oh it's it's very tropical too I mean there's a lot of northwest kind of plants but I think that it's very bold and big structures yeah and even art which is kind of cool because it ties <laughs> right into crack pots so that's yeah, very interesting that's true and that's kind of why I signed up for this one because I'm a scrapyard junkie and I 
grab things off the road all the time and oh this is cool i can use that and um yeah here's where you see it so Anna, you know, it's a bigger space, but actually there's a lot of small rooms, so there's a lot of plant material in here. Oh yes. I'm an avid cramscaper and <laughs> it it has its benefits. One of the thing is that things is that it not nothing has a chance to get as big as it normally gets. But you get the textures, you get the colors, you get everything, and you never ever ever have to weed. Ah, because so there's, there's no open space. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, all of these colors and textures play off of each other, and somehow you end up getting a, a, a sort of cohesive uh, feel, even though I have one of each. Mm -hmm. So when somebody tells you to, you have to buy three or five, don't believe them. It doesn't <laughs> have to be that way. And I think that it, you're also giving inspiration to people because you might be kind of nervous about putting things together like this, but here you're giving us all permission to do that. Yeah. Oh, God, play, 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 play. It's why why not and Life i know, is too serious <laughs> exactly exactly and i so, know during the tour um we'll be able to really see this garden and really experience take pictures but some of the crackpot artists will be here too they will be here and by chance i happen to have lots of very small garden rooms and there will be a vendor in each one and they will be showing off hopefully we'll set them up with little tables and things where they can show their work and you as a public is welcome to come and uh, browse and hopefully purchase and which all goes to support a very worthy organization and so. they are so interesting because they reuse all kinds of pieces too. oh yeah oh it's great like why throw things out when you can just totally change its use I mean there's so many things we're such a consumer society and they really try to widen the scope of what what you can do with materials and it's a shame keep things out of the landfill and do something fun with it exactly and so it's actually happening next saturday and you can get tickets and there is a second uh, tour to this second garden to visit and ryan is over at that house and it's not too far from here so it's really a very easy tour you get to see two beautiful gardens and we're going to go talk to ryan right now thanks so much anna you're so welcome well, we're on the next stop of the Crackpots Tour. I'm with Jeff. We're out the Fishingham Gardens, which are just spectacular Thank gardens, you. to say. And your gardens are very, actually, kind of well-known. They are. They are. Yeah. We've been published nationally, and, and we were just in an issue of um, Pacific Horticulture in the spring issue, and uh, a couple of newspaper, newspaper articles. And I remember years ago, Mike Darcy did a show here. And this is kind of a rare opportunity that you're opening up your gardens to the to the public. To right, out. I always swore we've never had a, have a tour. And part of it is our garden is so small, it can't handle large groups of people. And so every once in a while I do just invite someone over and say, you know, you can have an espresso drink or a glass of wine, and that is your tour. Uh, but uh, I've actually met a lot of great gardeners that way. But we didn't want the, you know, tour with the bus showing up and 75 people coming out and all tromping through the garden at once. Right. And so, you know, for people that are, you know, coming onto the tour and, you know, signing up to get tickets, you have a little, kind of a theme going on in your garden. So what, what should they expect to, to see when they come out here? Well, I, in the article that was in Pacific Horticulture, um, uh, Ali um, said it was the artistic garden. And I think that's kind of where things started with collecting the art. And I think I have art from 12 or 13 different cracked pot events out at Edgefield in the garden. So I have a long history with them. And um, I am a graphic designer and I love color. And we spent two and a half years coming up with the colors of the house and then really questioned whether we did the right thing. And I think we did the right thing. It just makes all the plants pop, the art pops, and um, it's worked out really well. Um, it was very dangerous for me to get on Etsy during COVID <laughs> and find all these cool art pieces, including the uh, the crooked birdhouse that just had tenants for the first time. and uh, But a lot of it's local artists. The glass is all um, Andrew Holmberg, who's a, a Portland artist. And I've been collecting his stuff for probably about 10 years. And the art ties into the colors in the garden. You'll find a lot of orange and purple and chartreuse in the art and the flowers and the garden and the house. <laughs> and you know, for the tour, when people are coming out, you know, they get to tour the gardens, but you also have, you know, there's going to be some vendors. Right. The... I think we're going to have five or six different artists um, showing their work in the garden, and it'll be placed throughout the garden. Um, the artists have had a real tough time with the crackpots 
big event at Edgefield being canceled last year, canceled this year. Um, three years ago, it was the 107 degree weather and the next year it was the smoke. So they've started doing the uh, garden duets with two gardens in the okay. same area that are very different. And it's a great fundraiser and the artists make some money. Right. And you know, the tour is coming up next weekend. So if people are interested in purchasing tickets for that, what's the best way for them to do that? They need to go online. It's crackpots.org. And that will direct you to um, the site to buy tickets. Tickets are limited to 100 people. And so there is uh, an availability question. So you need to do right. it soon. And um, then when you get to the event, um, there will be some social distancing. Um, I believe they're requiring masks. Uh, and there'll be a limited number of people let into the garden at a time. Right. And so, you know, your, your gardens are stunning, you know, and I'm just, for more information, I'm assuming they can go into the crack. Pots website, or you can go onto the GardenTime.tv website, and we'll click you over. You know the gardens are stunning. You know the weather is perfect. We're so excited to be out here in the tour. Today. Thank so, you. Jeff, it's been a pleasure being with you. Great to have you here. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong winds, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete, too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears, and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. I am so excited to be back at French Prairie Gardens with Katie. And Katie, today is beginning of Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, which everything's happening just like normal. Oh, yeah, it's back. Everything's going on like oh. we normally do, and that's what we missed last year. But we're going to have live music again this wow. year. Of course, opportunity to pick strawberries. <laughs> amazing. Lots of fun stuff for the kids. Obstacle course, tractor wagon ride, pig barrel train rides. And, of course, for mom and dad, beer and cider and plenty of it. I think we have over 22 different varieties this year. That's amazing. And so what is just a little bit different this year? A little different is we have to kind of number how many people we have here on the farm, which is great because it's going to feel like you we have the place to yourself. <laughs> um, but we're going to do that by doing time ticketing. So book your three hour window. Um, do that online on our website. You can even book your food there, get your mug, get your bucket. So all you have to do is show up and have fun. You know, that's so nice because I know in the past it's so crowded that maybe if you came later, you didn't get those ribs. That, that's and correct. And so now yes. you are assured of getting what you would like to eat for the family. That's correct. Yeah, you can choose your barbecue meal plate or your chicken dinner, book that online, get your tasting tickets, your mugs, your entry in. Everything is at your fingertips at home. 
Ah, and you need to tell us about these strawberries because I don't know if I've ever seen strawberries <laughs> this big and they're so fragrant. Um, they're just wonderful. They are, and strawberry season is just kind of getting underway. So the best picking would be if you come this weekend or maybe next weekend. Father's Day, we still will have some, but you know that's more about the experience. Kind of, you're going to be all over the field hunting right. and pecking. But you know, I picked strawberries as a kid, and <laughs> that's kind of what it's about. It is fun because there's nothing better than fresh strawberries. That's correct, and you know, family fun where you can have your kids here, feel safe out in the country, Definitely. and of course, if you haven't gotten any of your basket yet, we obviously <laughs> wow. still have plenty. And most of them are on sale. So the festival is just happening on the weekends, but what happens during the week? Well, we're closed on Monday, but we're here Tuesday through Friday, and the garden center is always open, the farm uh, market's open, we all have great goodies from the bakery, and we always have our strawberry shortcake, mm. we have a variety of scones, strawberry, of course, right now, strawberry pie, strawberry oh. rhubarb pie, and strawberry donuts, too. Whoa. <laughs> Well, you know, this is the place to come with your family. We all want to be safe. We want to be with our friends and family. And this is the place to come and enjoy yourself. Be out in the country. It's just wide open. You can just run around and just have a great time and have a wonderful meal. So if you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time. We'll click over to their Facebook page or to their website, and you can get your reservations for the next three weekends. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. Well, we're back down here at Garland Nursery. I'm with Lee. Lee, last time you were down here, you were talking with Judy about some great plants that can go in the sun or the shade. Yes. And, you know, there's just so many of them that you found a whole nother collection of some of your favorites. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I right? came up with another cartload of plants for right? you. <laughs> so, so do you want me to just yeah, get let, into let, it? Let's, let's hop in and see what, see what else. All right. Found. So we'll start on this side. We've got a hydrangea called Ruby Slippers. Yeah. And this is an oak leaf hydrangea, which is quite a bit different from what people traditionally think of as hydrangeas. Right. And this will get, it has the oak-like leaf, it'll get a panicle shaped flower that starts creamy white and ends up going ruby red oh, pretty. later in the summer. Um, in the full sun, the hydrangeas do require a little more water than they would in the full shade. Okay. So, you know, make sure you give it some summer water and it'll look good. It'll have great fall color as well. Great. And then it looks like down down in the front, we'll just work our work our way over here. We've got a GM down here. Um, those will grow in sun or shade. So this is Tempo Rose. Okay. But there are a lot of different varieties of GM that will work in sun or shade. In the shade, heavy shade, they're not going to bloom quite as well. The foliage will still look great, and they'll yes. get a smattering of blooms. In the sun, they're going to be very floriferous. Right. And it's another one of those perennials you kind of deadhead them or prune it back. Yep. You might get a flush of bloom. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. Some of them actually have been bred so they'll continue to bloom all summer long if you keep deadheading them. Gotcha. So. And it looks like a... This is the okay. glossy uh, Angelica, and uh, it'll grow in sun or shade. In the sun, the, the green will fade out just a little bit. In the okay. shade, it'll be just this dark, lustry um, foliage. And then the blooms are really cool on this, these giant blooms. The, the foliage fades a little bit after it blooms anyway, okay. but it's one that it ha makes a statement and will grow in either sun or Very shade. Pretty. Next one. Carex. <laughs> Carex, yeah, this one's called Feather Falls. Yeah. A lot of the different varieties of Carex will grow in sun or shade. Uh, it's one of those that you do need to get them water in the sun right. a little more than you would in the shade. This one's I brought because it's really interesting. It's, it, it, it really cascades kind of nicely. Oh, um, longer foliage, curly foliage looks great in containers or hanging out over rocks or that type right. of thing. And it's good year round. Too. It's it is, yeah, and it's evergreen, right. yep. And it'll pop back to, it looks like an Itea. Yeah, this one's Itea Sweet, uh, sweet Spire. This one is Little Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it only gets two to three feet high. The bigger ones, like there's a regular Henry that gets, you know, four or five right. feet. And this is great because it gets flowers this time of year. Great fall color that hangs on for a long time. Um, it will grow in sun or shade. A little fewer blooms and the, the habit will be looser in okay. the shade. Which so. is something important to remember as we're planting these you know, that your growth habit might be a little bit different in yes. the sun or shade. Absolutely. I've got uh, Tuscan Flame Nandina. Nandina I use quite a bit in designs where I know that it's going to be um, shady at some point right. in time, but it's full hot sun right now. They're really durable, great new growth on them, you know, colored new growth, great winter color. Um, this one gets two to three feet tall. It's deer resistant, yeah. fairly drought resistant once established. So it's a, it's a real tough plant. Gotcha. And it looks like a spirea. 
This is a spirea. This one is Betulifolia tor, so birch leaf spirea okay. tor. It blooms white this time of year. Um, will grow in sun or shade. It'll have fewer blooms in the sun, but the foliage will look actually better in the shade. Okay. Um, great habit, uh, good tough plant. Do, do a lot of the spireas handle sun yes, or shade? Or yes, yes. Spireas, quite a few of them will okay. handle a good bit of shade as well. Okay. And then yeah. you like a nice golden, uh, the Mexican orange. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Gold Fingers. So it's a newer variety to us here at right. Garland Nursery. And it has the gold foliage in, the, in the, the heat of summer outside in the full sun, it will be very gold. If you have right. it in a shady spot, it'll be more of a chartreuse green. Okay. It's still beautiful but def definitely a change in colors depending upon uh, the sun exposure. It looks like the, the foliage is a little lacier than what we've... Yes, the regular, uh, the regular um, Mexican orange is going to have a little thicker leaf. Okay. So. And then, you know, a lot, a lot of people recognize this one. Yes. Right? <laughs> this is Salal. I decided I better throw in a native. A lot of the natives will actually grow in the sun or the shade. Right. Um, this one looked particularly nice. Uh, the Salals don't always look great when you have them in containers at a nursery, but right. we happen to have this beautiful one, and I thought I'd bring it and, and show it. Right, and I've so, seen some of those in the sun. They do tend to stay more compact. Yeah, right? this will be like two to three feet in the full hot sun, and if you have it in the shade, it'll probably be five or six feet tall or can be. Okay. Yeah. And then it looks like the last guy up there. Looks yeah, like the, a, the last one is a U, and this one is a Emerald Spreader. It's a Japanese U, so it'll stay low, like two feet tall, maybe eight feet wide eventually oh, okay. and to be a little richer green in the shade a little lighter green in the um, sun but does great in either very drought resistant which is is quite nice you know under trees in the shade right. it's you're not going to have to water it much okay so and you know you commented earlier about you know the planting you know something in the sun versus the shade what are some good tips, you know, if to do this that they need to watch out for? Yeah, I would watch out for, even if it's a shade plant and you're planting in a full hot sun, I would still avoid putting it like right against a, a south or west facing wall of a yeah. house uh, or in between like two concrete areas where you have that reflected right. heat. So it'd be the full sun more out in the landscape. Okay. And uh, then as far as the shade goes, um, just know that the form's going to be a little bit different. You're not going to have quite as many flowers. So, and well, well, water needs? Water okay. needs for the shade plants in the sun usually need more water in the summer okay. to keep them looking nice and perked up. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, so you have a you know, great selection, a lot of really good ideas for you know, those, those mixed areas in your yard that can be, be totally tough. So it's yeah. nice to have a lot of, you know, a lot of variety. Oh, yeah. Down here and all. Yeah. You know, so make sure you come down to Gar Garland Nursery. You, know, you can go to gardentime.tv or you can go to Garland's website or come down to the nursery and visit Lee and their knowledgeable staff. And they have a great selection, you know, a plant for every place. So thanks, Lee. Thank you, Ryan. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. At Capital Subaru, we are family. It's not all about selling cars here. It's about our community and our families. We keep you moving. With a Subaru, it's always, what are you going to do next? And with our new space, we'll get you serviced faster than ever before. And we are growing. With over 72,000 square feet and 30 new service bays. Our new location is opening later this spring. I can't wait. It's a new year, and it's going to be awesome. At Capital Subaru, we are your way on the parkway. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew controls most common garden insects and is derived from a naturally occurring bacteria to help with your organic gardening. It's safe to use even on fruits and vegetables. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home too. 
Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. I'm on the OSU campus and I'm with Andini. And Andini, can you tell me what your position is here? I am the pollinator health extension specialist for the state of Oregon and uh, I'm an assistant professor here in the Department of Horticulture. Ah, and so you have a very unique position here and I think pollinators is on everyone's list these days as gardeners because we just want to help. So I understand that there's a new um, publication on the OSU website and so you were one of the people that um, had made that new, um, new page. Absolutely. It's a brand new publication. It's comprehensive. It's 41 pages. It's Whoa. available for free. It includes garden designs, so you can pick it up and you can flip and it shows you how to lay out a pollinator garden. It has all the plants, it has plants that were selected to, that were available in nurseries here in Oregon, so you don't have to go hunt for them. Excellent. It has 10 tips on how to pull this off. Uh, and so we don't have time for all 10 tips, so we're going to talk about four that are really important that we all would love to put in practice. So what should we start with? The very first thing is a basic gardening principle, so that's nothing new, but you want to have bloom right across the season. So right first thing in the spring, you want to have things like rosemary that come on and bloom right away, uh, some of the currants, but you want to have things blooming right to the end of the year, so Russian sage, uh, black-eyed Susans really cover the entire season because bees are active all year round. So if you only have it for a short period of time, you're just not going to cut it. You're only going to help some of the bees. Ah, and you know that's really important for gardeners because we want to enjoy our gardens all the time and have beautiful flowers. So that's a great one. And so what's next? Second one is that not all the bees go to the same plants. So it's really important, like a garden like here, to have a variety of different plants. Plants with different shaped flowers, uh, plants from different families of plants, that'll attract all the pollinators in. We have hundreds of species of butterflies, we have over 600 species of bees, and if you only have one or two plants in there that are pollinator plants, you won't get the full breadth of them. Ah, uh -huh. and so the next one, the third one? Third one is, there's a lot of people that are concerned about pesticides. The key thing that comes out in the publication is that there are some plants that are pest prone. There are some plants that bloom that are gonna have pest problems. So if you can select plants that aren't gonna have those pest problems, you can have a garden like this and not have to apply any pesticides. Ah, and that's really wonderful because we do want to be as clean as possible, organic as possible, and just really help the population of pollinators. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and then the fourth one. Fourth one is we've got, you can see over here, we've got a, uh, we have bees that are being managed. So there's things like mason bees or honeybees you can have in your property. And the key thing is to manage them responsibly. So you need a little bit of training. You can't just pick up some of these, you see these straws that you get at Costco and just expect it to work. You need to get a little bit of training and our master gardeners across the state can give you that training. They can show you how to manage these bees. And is there anything else you'd like to add to help us? You know, the one thing I will say, and this is in the publication, is you should start with a plan. It's so easy just to crowd out your garden with all sorts of plants and just know you kind of didn't think it through. Key thing is taking these 10 concepts and kind of laying it out on a piece of paper, gritting it out, making sure the plants have enough space, know what they're going to grow into, make sure it's going to look good over the season. It's important that it looks good. You can't do that without a plan. <laughs> So we have our four tips, but I have yep. another question. So do I have to have like 40 acres to do this? Absolutely not. I have a small courtyard, contain all containers, and I've been able to put in all of these principles and make them work right there. Uh, some, there's lots of small shrubs that are built for containers. Uh, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of annuals and perennials. You can really achieve all of this in a very small space. Uh, well, that's really good news for that. And so, you know, the website will be on the Garden Time uh, website, but it's a great informational packet that you can get for free from the OSU website. So please go to gardentime.tv and click to that link and get all the information for a new pollinator garden for your house. Thanks so much, Andy. My pleasure. You can use water wisely this summer with these simple tips. Periodically, check your watering system to make sure it is working correctly. Tighten hose connections and adjust sprinklers to water plants and not the pavement. Give your lawn and garden a deep soak twice weekly instead of watering daily. Skip the fertilizer until the fall and mow your lawn less often. 
Taller grass holds moisture in longer between waterings. Get more water-wise gardening tips at regionalh2o.org. Judy, what are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terracasa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. I'm here with Dr. Tom Smiley from the Bartlett Tree Research Laboratory. We're out in this uh, beautiful garden and you know as our gardens are starting to awaken from spring we had a lot of damage from this winter and you know there's things that we should probably be looking at in our garden as from the damage and what to do. Yes, we're gonna start with nutrient deficiencies. And we just wanted to start uh, looking at this tree. And we have a very light color here, which could indicate a nutrient deficiency. There are other reasons for the light color, but that's one that we're concerned with. Uh, so to verify that, we could take a sample of the foliage or soil, or better yet, both, have them analyzed and find out what nutrients are deficient. Right. Now here in the Portland area we've done thousands of soil samples. We have a pretty good idea of what's lacking. We see a lot of nitrogen deficiencies right. usually caused by lack of organic matter in the soil and we have a lot of soils that don't have enough potassium and manganese. So those are three okay. of the common ones. Plus uh, calcium is lacking in a lot of our soils. So it's hard to tell from landscape to landscape exactly what's going on there, which is why we like to take right. the samples. Now we send them into our own uh, lab for diagnosis, but you can send them into the extension mm -hmm. laboratories and get a good answer back. We always like to do that before we fertilize, so we're not putting on the wrong product or too much of a product. Uh, too much of any fertilizer can contaminate the environment, okay. especially things like phosphorus. We're very concerned about uh, near fresh water. We can get uh, blooms of algae if there's too much okay. phosphorus. So most of our fertilizers don't even have phosphorus and we encourage other people to not use phosphorus unless there's an absolute need for it. Yeah. But find out what you need, put it on right. uh, it's, at reasonable rates. Right. It sounds like it's important to know kind of what you're lacking first as opposed to just putting things on there that you might not Absolutely. Not need. Are there, there are symptoms in the plants, you know, you talked about like some off-color yes. foliage. So is there other symptoms that a, a plant may indicate that would show that it need, needs something? Yes, they're usually color related and, and this one is sort of an overall chlorotic or you know light right. light color. Uh, sometimes we'll see chlorosis between the veins, sometimes we'll see marginal chlorosis or marginal necrosis, dying okay. of the edges. Any of those can be a nutrient deficiency, but a lot of them can be other things as well. So doing the diagnostics uh, is really a good place to start. 
So you had mentioned uh, chlorosis. Yes. What exactly is that? Chlorosis is a, a lighter color, either light green like this tree, uh, or yellowing of the foliage. So just a lighter color. And is there, you know, you talked about your your service does does a lot of the soil soil testing. You know, for for a homeowner is you know, is there something that they can they can do to tell that, or is it best to have a, an expert come in? And oh, uh, they can collect soil samples themselves and, and send them to the university laboratory or foliar samples, uh, collect a, a bunch of leaves and send those in a bag full, say a quart of leaves, right. uh, and send them in. Uh, either way, uh, you can get diagnosis from a lab. It, it takes a, a, a good laboratory, a plant diagnostic lab, to get those right. results to. And you know, and there's lots of different different types of fertilizers out on the yes. market. You go to the garden centers and you, you know the shelves are, are full of those and yes. they're all all very different. So once you know it sounds like once they know kind of what they need is there you know appropriate techniques for applying fertilizers? Uh, yeah, there are a number of different ways of applying fertilizers. We can put uh, dry granular fertilizers down. So if we have uh, bare soil, that's a fine material to use, very easy to apply, very easy to measure. Uh, more professionals tend to use the liquids because they can go out more quickly. And again, a surface applied liquid on bare soil is fine. In the tree care business, we like to soil inject fertilizers mm -hmm. so that the grass roots are not getting a lot of the fertilizer. Uh, and then if it's mulched, uh, we can get it below the mulch because the mulch will at least temporarily tie up the nutrients. So getting it into the soil uh, is really good. And then if we're on slopes, and we have so many slopes right. around here, especially over water, the last thing we want are the fertilizers getting into water. So soil injecting on those slopes uh, can be a, a safety factor because again, we don't want fertilizers right. in water. Right, so it sounds, you know, it sounds, you know, may, may sound complicated to some people, but it's really not. If you under, understand your, the soil, what it needs or what it's yes. lacking, yes. and finding, you know, the appropriate fertilizers um, to put in there, and then the right techniques to, to applying that. You got it. You know, and you guys have, have the services to be able to do all of that. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, so for more information on, you know, the Bartlett tree and their services, on, on how to fertilize her and how to prune, you know, make sure you go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. So, you know, it's fascinating to learn about, you know, what happens in our soil and what we need to make sure that our gardens thrive. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Is your garden getting tired? Don't let your garden fizzle out because of the summer heat. Stop by Wavra Farms for a refresher in summer color. We carry a great selection of plants that love the summer. Give your garden the splash of color that it deserves. Your outdoor entertaining will be more enjoyable when you are surrounded by beautiful plants, wonderful flowers, and great fragrance. Let us show you what a summer garden should be. Wavra Farms, just east of Salem, off Highway 22 at the Joseph Street exit. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Garden time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world-famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels, and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. Well, we're down in downtown Damascus. I'm with Diana from Terra Casa. And Diana, you guys are known for your pots and your fountains, but there's so much more gardening that you can do. There's a lot of things you can add to your landscape that we love to see out in people's yards and in their, even in their gardens. And one of the things we really love is the shroomies. And these are very popular. They're ceramic, they're high fired, so they can be out now four seasons a year. And they're all in different sizes and colors, and they just add a wonderful splash to your landscape. 
And you, know, and you have some other kind of fun things, you know, after you're decorating up. It looks like you have some great spheres. We do have spheres. Um, gazing globes used to be big, but a lot of people want that solid color now in their landscape. Just as a, a simple statement color piece to add to something in their yard or their garden. And yeah, it's very, we have some with suns and moons and stars. And, and then, then the you solids. Know, you know, for putting these out, you know, a lot of people are worried about some of the ceramics sometimes about leaving them outside in the wintertime. Can these stay out year round? You know, I say this type of thing because it's decorative and it's much easier to move than say a large pot that's planted is go ahead and leave them out three seasons. If we're getting a hard freeze, I would bring them into the garage just okay. to be safe. And then you also have some fun metal metal pieces. We do. We have uh, metal stakes and we also have metal trellises and all kinds of fun little whimsy things you can add to your garden. Butterflies and um, dragonflies, all kinds of things that people love to see out in the yard. And then you have a whole nother section of, of the store here that has a, a lot more fun new, like wall hanging metal art. Yes, so. the outdoor metal art. And I'm, I'm a big one on taking what you're doing inside your home and maybe transferring that outside so that your living space outside is something that you're gonna enjoy as much a walk over there and we'll go check that out. Okay. Here. So Diana, you also have a lot of great metal art for like walls and yes. fences. We do. So people love suns, they love moons, they love stars. This is um, a company out of Haiti and they take uh, steel oil drums. These are the ends of the steel oil drums. These are hand cut and then hand hammered by artisans down Ooh. there and they're just beautiful pieces. And they do suns, they do florals, they do butterflies, they do some colored art. They're just absolutely stunning and make for a really unique piece on the outside of your home. Yeah, and that's, you know, as we're standing here, there are some other fun kind of you know, metal, so metal pieces here So we have metal too. fountains, we have, um, these can also be actually indoors, as long as you have a nice safe spot to put them indoors. Um, these are fun because they take up a very small space around your home and it's, uh, they're fun to hear the water trickle outside. And then we also have the colored recycled metal art, which is the Think Outside line, okay. which has cars and trucks and little uh, whimsical figures and lots of color. And can those, those can be outside year round? Year round, okay. absolutely, yes. So, you know, so Terra Casa is just so much more than just the fountains and the pottery. You know, they have all the, the garden art and the metals. You know, so much you can do to, out, to put in your yard to be out and enjoying it. So, Diana, it's definitely worth the trip out here to come see it. You know, it's ever-changing. It always seems like you have something new every time we're we in do. here. We do. So Thanks, Make sure Ryan. you come out to Terra Casa. You know, you can go to Terra Casa's website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, Diana, it's always a pleasure to be out here. Thanks Thank you, Ryan. Today's tip of the week is deadheading the old blooms on your roadies. You know, this time of year, the roadies are really done. And you know, the tops of the plants are getting kind of unsightly because you get these seed pods that are forming. Now this one has the seed pods forming and it's also producing new foliage. So what I like to do is I usually use my fingers and go in and just pop off all those seed heads. You know, if you're really careful, you don't disturb this other foliage and you could take them all off and the energy will go into this new, new foliage. But if the plant is getting too big, you might want to just pop all this off because it's just going to get taller and really make sometimes the roadie too stretched. You can even take your pruners and go back to this next bunch of leaves and cut that whole thing off and you re really reduce the size of the roadie. Just a few other tips about when you're working with rhododendrons is I always like to use gloves because they do give off a milky sap that if you have sensitive skin, you really can get just a little bit of irritation on your skin. And just remember not to touch your eyes. You know, cleaning up the roadies and getting them really beautiful the rest of the season, that's our tip of the week. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. 
Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and welcome to our front flower bed right as you're going to turn into the nursery. A couple years ago I planted some lupins out here. Lupins are one of my absolute favorite early flowering perennials. And these varieties that you see around me here are a brand new introduction a couple years ago called West Country Lupins. And they are far superior to anything else we have. There are lots of different colors available from pinks and blues and yellows. They are all in full bloom right now at the farm. So head on out to the farm, pick out the perfect color that's right for your home. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll, we'll keep you updated on all the perennials throughout the summer that are coming in bloom. And we look forward to seeing you soon. I'm visiting with Gavin today. He's an artist and sculptor. And so, Gavin, you have an interesting name for your business. And what is it? It's uh, Piff to Bark. And what is the meaning behind that? Um, I just, it's the parts of a tree, so the center of the tree and then the, the outside of the tree, the bark. Um, and I try to utilize reclaimed wood, so um, it's using all parts of a tree, essentially, for the sculptures that I make. So really you've taken that artistic um, view and your talents to really an interesting way. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so my background in sculpture and as an artist, I really try to make things to get people to notice. And um, I have a, a large passion for nature um, and the natural environments. Um, and the pollinators are, are huge, important aspects to life. Um, and in order to kind of spread my love for pollinators, I started creating uh, these mason and bee homes. Um, and I create them in a way that draws people in. They, they look at the pollinator box and they say, what is that? <laughs> and um, then that starts to create a conversation and opens their mind to, to the mason bee and other pollinators that are around us. Ah, that is interesting because I, I think of an artist, I think of you at a, as a, a museum or a sculpture garden, but you've taken that talent and, and brought it to our natural world, which is an interesting connection there. Yeah. And so on these boxes, um, solitary bees, they don't have a hive. They're not really social that way. So right. it's interesting the way you have made them that it's like a little um, condo or a hotel. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Definitely drawing upon architectural elements and um, using my just kind of general aesthetic appreciations for wood textures and um, different grains. It's interesting that you've designed this with the trays that come out um, for the bees to lay their um, eggs for the next generation. So why did you do it this way? So it's really important to be able to rotate the nesting sites out each season because disease could spread or um, you know the, the trays could get occupied by their insects. So having a clean nesting site each season is very important. A lot of the pollinator boxes you'll, you'll find out there are kind of one-offs. They're just holes drilled into wood um, and there's no way to clean them out. So being able to, to really have a nice fresh nesting site is, is very important. 
It sounds like you've done a lot of research on this. It's not just like, oh, I decided to drill some holes and put this together. So really you've looked into the science of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to make the most functional box possible um, while also trying to make them artistically interesting. Um, and it's really important for me to be able to make habitats that are going to be beneficial for the mason bee. Not that, not, it's not going to you know, be detrimental because that's, that's ultimately what we're trying to do is to help the pollinator find, find a nesting site. And Gavin, these are beautiful, but people in Salem can see one of the larger um, kind of uh, house that you did for Capital Subaru. Yeah, yeah, I did a uh, commission for Capital Subaru, a bigger um, sculptural mason bee home. It's about uh, four feet tall, and um, it has a lot of the same elements using kind of the collage um, wood texture aesthetic, and it houses um, mainly the mason bee as well. It has, it has holes throughout the sculpture um, for mason bees to, to lay their eggs in. Yeah, we visited it not too long ago and it was really fantastic to see. And so moving on from bees, you've gone to um, birds and bees. So here's a birdhouse that you've done and that is just lovely. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of drawing upon the same kind of ideas with the mason bee homes, trying to create something aesthetically pleasing um, to draw people in and have it built very sculpturally. It is. It's got so many um, just little artistic elements to it and just all different textures of wood. There's driftwood. Um, it's just really nice. And I noticed that this is probably for a certain bird, isn't it? Yeah, the chickadee. Yeah, I'm trying to find bird species that are at risk in particular areas. So this particular home is going to a person in Corvallis and the chickadee is at risk. Their habitats are at risk. So um, they're promoting birdhouses to be made for them and that's built to the specs of what that particular bird is looking for in a home. Ah, oh, that's interesting. And so where can we go to um, possibly find where you're going to be an event or to purchase some? Yeah, I have a website, pithtobark.com, and you can buy my pollinator boxes there. The birdhouses aren't currently for sale, but I do take commissions and um, you can contact me through my website as well. Oh, that is nice. So it really is a beautiful boxes, pollinator boxes, and maybe in the future some more birdhouses. So please go to gardentime.tv. You can find the link to Gavin's and really kind of help our pollinators out there with getting pollinator boxes for your garden. Thanks so much, Gavin. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And Ryan, why don't you hold these strawberries and I'll hold your beer. Oh, I don't think so, Judy. Ah, uh, and for you to come out and enjoy these lovely strawberries, a beer and some barbecue, come out to French Prairie Gardens. And they also have a great full service nursery full of some amazing plants that you can take home with you. For more information, please go to gardentime.tv. Ryan and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.